Um, so thank you very much for joining us again. And it's our last two sessions this morning. So we've got this one on political management and another one on Canada, which is going to be really interesting. So I'm going to present my vision for what political management is and talk a bit about the Routledge handbook that I've just been asked to, to create by Routledge. And then Andre, who, as Edward said, is at Carton University um, from the programme of political management. He actually set up the programme of political management. So he's absolutely the perfect person to add his comments and respond to some of the things that I say, as well as offer his own perspectives. So first of all, what is political management? As Edward said, it is different to political marketing and it's much more emergent. It's much less established than political marketing. And I only started getting into it in the last, last few years. So what management, political management is about is, just as with political marketing, it's about applying management concepts to politics. So parties, governments, campaigns, and, and so on. So really, it's, it's all about how practitioners working in organizations like campaigns and government offices use the whole wealth of management concepts, everything that's normally done in managing businesses, such as planning and organizing and HR, um, which Paul Wilson talked about earlier in the week, and leadership and reviewing to achieve goals. Now, unlike marketing, the key difference is it's more focused on getting things done and it's more focused internally within the organization. So that's the real difference. It's about getting things done. So you might have a, a marketing you know, strategy, but management is, well, how do you actually implement that? How do you actually make it happen? So in terms of academic disciplines, it's more drawing across sort of political science management and maybe public admin as well. Although public admin is traditionally the public sector, there are definitely overlaps there. Now, in terms of core areas of political management, it's the same as business management, but obviously applied to politics. So it includes political planning, which is about designing and, and implementing an organizational strategy. This is seen as really important so that people have a sense of where they're trying to get to. Political organizing, which is the internal structure of an organization, whether it's a campaign team or a government or a political office or party office. And um, political HR, which Paul Wilson talked about early in the week. So that's all about appointing and, and utilizing um, staff and volunteers. And political leadership, which is kind of what we would normally think of as leadership, but more using particular management leadership approaches. And I'll go through some of those. And it's really trying to exert influence, which um, leaders have to use a lot of different range of techniques and approaches to, to achieve. And then lastly, but not least, is about reviewing which is reflection and renewal and that includes things like party reviews but also more generally reflecting on where you're going and whether you need to change. So I'm just going to go through each of these core areas in turn just highlighting some key points that I've found from the research I've done so far. So in terms of political planning this includes setting the vision like what is the vision or mission of the organization what do they want to what do you want to achieve setting clear organizational goals so people know what they should be working um, towards with a campaign it can be sometimes easier because you, you know you're trying to win but with other more longer term organizations it's a bit harder also i'm um, creating organization strategy to, and plans to meet those goals at all the different levels the idea is to get everybody singing on the same hymn sheet so to speak get everybody within an organization working towards the same goals, and then you're much more likely to actually achieve them. And of course, there's no point just having plans, you need to actually implement them. So some examples of this are work that Alex Marland in Canada has shown, which is things like government communication calendars. You know, that's a clear plan, a more short-term plan for organizing communication and making sure everything's connected and unorganized and is sticking to the overall vision and goals. But in terms of overall plans, like for a new government, it tends to be much rarer. So this is the, the picture there is just a picture of um, communication around our plan, which the New Zealand government um, elected in 2017 launched. But they didn't launch it until a year into their government because they'd only just got into power in 2017. They hadn't expected to win. It was a, a very complex um government coalition and so it took them a full year to come up with an agreed plan and then they'd only got two years left to actually implement it. So certainly planning in government is, for in terms of political management, not public sector, but political management planning is not done as well. So that's one of the key areas to, to be aware of. And then political organizing. So this is all like, you know, how do you organize people? What teams do you put them in? What roles do they have? And there's sort of various theories about whether you connect, you divide things up very clearly into different units or you try and work across boundaries so that people collaborate and come together. 
It's also about um, internal communication. So how effectively people communicate with each other, because if you don't talk to each other very well, you can't work well together and you're not going to achieve those goals. And then also about improvement, change and development. So we're all aware of things like organisational change. Most of us have been through them. But the idea is that you're actually developing as well and coming up with ways to improve your organisation. And then also, and this is the most interesting thing, which is using power that you've been given tactically and strategically, but also creating power. One of the most interesting things to come out of the research is that a lot of political management power is created very carefully, because actually the form of power given isn't always that strong, Um, because it's not like you're a CEO of a business and people just follow you. It's a lot more nebulous than that. And some of the ways that politicians and political leaders create power is things like communications, control and regulation, um, increasing political staffing. And that's what, you know, Cotton's program of political management talks about, um, tries to train people to be political staffers. Also creating new organisational units. So we've got a picture here of a screenshot of the website for the implementation unit which is like a delivery unit that the New Zealand government's just created. And creating new units gives people, gives politicians power. And also symbolic power. So even things like speeches um, can influence public opinion, you know, and then that in turn will influence politicians. And then they might be more likely to follow the actual leader. So that's one of the really interesting things about this is, is very much creating power rather than it just being given to you. And you can see the quote I've got there where they say it's a very human process. And um, the chief of staff said, and a party president said, it's not, you know, what, what is the power, but it's how, how do you manage it? You take it and you need to use it and you need to manage it to make it work for you. It's not a, just a simple, you've got it and you use it. Political HR, now Paul talked about this, Paul Austin talked about this early in the conference. And this is all about how you, you, know, you get people, you select them for roles and you train them, you develop them, and then also manage them so that they can be the best they can and help you achieve your organisational goals. The reality in politics, though, in most cases, um, as Paul Wilson's talk um, and our comments from that talk um, suggested, is that this is actually a real area of weakness in political practice, particularly in government, but also in parties generally. Um, there isn't a formal process for recruiting political advisors. Um, there's a quote here from our Dern's chief of staff saying it happens almost by accident. There's no training. Another quote from the Australian Prime Minister chief of staff saying it's it's sort of taking a bit of a punt. So there is a real recruitment issue. The other thing is there isn't training for um, staff. And there's also lots of reports of very problematic management where staff aren't supported to be um, excellent and to help with the goals, that they're not given clear direction, but they're told off when it goes wrong and so on. And from the practitioners I interviewed, they said this was a really key area that we need to address because it's, it's a real weakness. People learn on the job. And so the more experienced are, the better, but they don't often stay in power very long. They're very demanding jobs. And so, you know, they get there, they don't know what they're doing, they learn what they're doing by the time they leave. And then they go and all that wisdom um, goes with them. Then political leadership. So there are a range of different approaches in the business management literature being adapted. These are just some of them. The key point from this is that the power that leaders have, even right at the top, is very transient. And so this is what practitioners have told me. They said it's very transient, it's very nebulous. There's very limited formal authority. And so you have to spend a lot of time getting other people on board. Um, you have to use a range of skills and approaches. And you know, here are just some of them. And you need to adapt them really to the, to the situation. The other key thing the leader needs to do is keep people focused on that strategy. So if you think back to political planning, that's what we um, that's what leaders need to try and do to make sure people are on board with that and following that. And they can build support and visibility for policy and getting things through with um, persuasion, with communication. But they also often need to collaborate with people. And that's where it's very much a human process that comes in. It's not just I get your power and exercise it. Instead, you're constantly you know, playing with people to try and get them on board. And then last but not least is political reviewing. So this is um, key things such as party reviews after the election. But the key point about this is ideally actually reviewing is ongoing, that people are often at the top level and the individual level reflecting on how they're doing, whether they're meeting those organisational goals and whether they need to adapt um, to in order to achieve that. And it includes considering opportunities, new things that are coming, new technological tools or responding to changes in the environment and also doing something about it. So one of the problems is often there's reviews, party reviews, and then actually nothing happens. No changes are implemented. As I say, management, political management is about doing things, about getting things done, and it's, reviewing is no different. 
So just one of the last few points is that in practice, the political management areas are less functional. So although it's important to look at those five key areas, and that's what we're going to be focusing the Routledge Handbook on, and we're also looking for theories that go across the different areas. So this is one of the theories that I've come up with so far to reflect that um, political management is more of a dance than a march, that you, they don't get to go into power and just do whatever they want. Um, power is very dispersed. One minute. Uh, thank you. The ability to manage and change it is very, um, you know, it's always contested. And requires a lot of relationship building, really good communication and persuasion internally, and very strategic and tactical use of rules such as Parliament. So Paul Wilson once said, you know, you need somebody who knows the rules well and then knows how to get around them. And that's why I think political management is also a bit of a dance as well as those functional areas. So lastly, about the book, so Routledge have asked me to edit a handbook of applied political management in this area. So after the conference, I'll be sending you details about um, potential contributions that you might make. It's going to be quite a slow book because we're going to spend time building people's understanding and giving them time to research this area. Um, so further details will come, but it's a really exciting area and great that Rowledge are getting behind this and seeing this is a really important area for potential expansion. And so it's going to be the beginning of a, a really exciting journey. Right, I will hand over to Andre now.